wish you could smell the kerosene through the video. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, she, I think she bumped off the geotech style because it didn't look commanded. It kind of she uh -oh. kind of she yeah. kind of jumped. Normally, I keep her right on the center line. And yeah. For reason, it's not a grip. And it well, be these old jets had so much. You know, that wing's got so much lift. Which half power, okay. This is about scale speed at the fast yeah. speed or whatever you want to go. This is an 80, right? Yeah, it's an 80. Alright, this is a, uh, for those who may not know, hey, welcome back to Just Wing It. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back, boys and girls, and RC Malavation. This is all across the globe. Today we have a treat. This is a bell. C-59, Era, Era Co Co Cobra? Era Comet. Era Comet. That's what I wanted to say. It didn't sound right, but yeah, Era Comet. Cobra, of course, is the P-39 slash P, I think, 65. But anyways, P-59. This, ladies and gentlemen, is America's first jet. Test flown in complete secrecy out at uh, uh, Rogers Dry Lake, Muroc Army Airfield. Later to be renamed Edwards Air Force Base after, uh, I believe, Lieutenant Edwards who died in a flying wing crash. This is Bell Aircraft's amazing creation. Or master in, model of Brent Hecht. Built in New York, actually, inside of a building. In I'm sorry? Built in a building in uh, New York in complete secrecy. Yes, yes. In 110 days, I think, is... Jeez. Yeah, something crazy like that. It's flying on it. This is a... Is this a King Tech 80? It's a Swiwin. Swiwin, okay. So we got a Swiwin 80. Very nice, crisp four-pointer. Model was uh, built from a kit by an Arizona modeler. Never flew it. Brent is thus far the only person to ever fly this model. It actually successfully uh, trophied in static at the AMA convention. Um, and uh, Brent has acquired the model and has brought it to flying condition. You're watching it today. It is a beautiful tribute to the early genius, the early jets, at the dawn of a of a new era. Uh, Brent, I was mistaken. Did this plane fly in forty three? Uh, forty two. Forty two. Okay. I wanted to say 42, but it sounded so early. October yeah, 42. 42. We got the contract in like January or February. And yeah. That's a, a beautiful flying airplane when it's calm like this. Uh, it could probably use a gyro for windy conditions. It does... Okay. Much like the real one, it has it's not very stable in yaw for whatever reason. Really? Okay. And so it'll start to kind of dance around when you it get will. crosswind gusts and stuff. Yeah. Even at speed. Yeah, not not too bad at speed, but just mostly the like lower speeds when it comes into land and whatnot. Okay. 
touch and go here, then a full oh. stop. Okay. This takes pretty short flight time, so we get about six minutes out of this thing. Okay. Yeah, we're at five minute forty five on the on the video right now. Five fifty mark. comes in real nice though, I mean, it's, it's a sweetheart. Just such a distinctive looking airplane, it really is. And what's our pilot's impressions while we're taxiing back? It's just a really honest flying airplane. It's not spectacular at precision rolls and inverted flight and stuff, but I mean, it's a, a very docile airplane, so sure. it's fun. Yeah. some of the details in the model. Sure, so, sure. <clears throat> when I got the airplane, um, it was all just kind of like factory fresh. So just base, all drab and neutral gray. Right. With all the markings on it and stuff. Right. Now, lots of nomenclature. Um, and these, these, these airplanes sat outside at Muroc, you know. Yeah. They, they kind of became the bastard stepchildren really, <laughs> right. really quick and right so just because the performance wasn't what they were hoping for and so it never became a frontline fighter and so they they kind of used them as just uh like test beds i know, guess they or were, they were testing stuff with them yeah. they were training new guys on not new guys but training guys how to fly jets because sure. it's a different operating procedure for the motors and everything sure so they sat outside they got super faded yeah and uh so I did some like paint chipping and some fading on the paint. So I did a lot of airbrushing. Yeah, um, just looks stunning. And uh, a lot of different color variations actually. There's three or four different colors of green in here that I've kind of mixed in to create some different. Yeah. You know, and a lot of it probably washes out in the video, but. Yeah, um, but I can see a lot of it. We can see the, the, the chipping, you can see some of the weathering, the yeah. shading. Yeah, for sure. And so, anyways, uh, I ended up having to do some other mods of the airplane. The landing gear blocks were not made to handle the airplane's weight at all. And yeah, so, they, they kind of poked through the, not yeah, I want to say they poked through the wing, but. I had a bunch of um, issues, and I ended up breaking this wing skin almost all the way across here. Wow. And so, basically, uh, last month, I essentially redesigned the entire landing gear structure. <laughs> And so now they're solid. Now, before I had to just kiss the ground every time. Right. I mean, even still, it would kind of break it. So, but now it's good. So, and the gear's all good now. Uh, four minutes. The power is great. I wish the flight times were a little longer, but I can't fit any bigger fuel tanks in it. Right. So, I'm right. stuck at about six, and a, six to six and a half minutes. But uh, anyways, it's a fabulous flying airplane, and uh, it's, a, it's beautifully built, and it's a, a Gromania kit. So, it's a okay. European kit. And it weighs about 20 pounds dry, and I want to say the wingspan is 74 inches or 75 inches. Wow! It's a it's a nice it's a nice size airplane. It's not. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's not so big that, that. it's a pain in the butt to move everywhere. Right. Like T38 is. Right. I can just take one wing off and put it in the car, and it's not a big deal. So yeah. And it flies on a single swimming 80, so it's about 17 pounds of thrust. 
and uh, it flies it definitely more than scale performance wise. It's, sure. The real ones only went about 400 miles an hour. So. Yeah, they struggled kind of, but yeah, the real long takeoff rolls. Oh yeah. Not much vertical, but yeah. Yeah, if you get up really close, you can see some of the rivet detail, the skin, and uh, just lots of really cool detail in this model. Look at that. Look at that. So, look at that. It's a really. And what's neat about the P59 is I've never seen one fly as a model before this one. Well, uh, my, my friend Vic scratch built a small one forever ago, <laughs> and, and, and that was the only other P59 I've ever right. seen fly. So it's a very rarely modeled airplane, Sure. which I like. Underappreciated. Yeah, and you know, most people don't even know what it is. So no, no. It's neat to kind of, you know, share some of the history with people because they don't yes. realize that this is America's first jet. So. Absolutely. But anyways, it's a it's a beautiful flying airplane, and I it really is. enjoy it. And it's uh, it's definitely sweet. So. Yeah. Well, thank you, Brent, for letting me join you out here at the field yeah. today, and. Uh, Really, really, really appreciate not only just spending time with you as a dear friend, and I mean that with my heart, but uh, just watching you fly these scale aircraft because nobody does it better, brother. <laughs> nobody does it better. So Thank thanks much, brother. Thank you. All right. Brent Hecht and the Grimania kit uh, P 59 Era Comet. It's got a, a, a Shrewin 80 in it. We're out at the field today in Arvin, California with Team Hecht. Cheers. Thanks for watching, everybody. Happy landings. Looking forward to all your comments, thumbs ups, and your subscriptions are greatly, greatly appreciated. Cheers, everybody.